Hi, good afternoon, friend. It's Susanna. I hope you have a great, great um, Friday. A little bit of heavy work today. Stress, stress, stress. But I have no stress casting all of my burden upon the Lord because He cares for me. Casting all my cares, anxiety on you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for relieving me for any stress and anxiety today. I'm casting it all on you unto you in jesus name praying for you heavenly father bless all my partners and uh bible readers and subscribers around the world in jesus name bless everyone that's praying for me and my family and i lift up my friends um miss fisher and her family as they going through mourning for her grandson and i pray for all those who need to be healed be healed be made whole from the top of your head to the sole of your feet and I pray for those that need salvation. May the Lord of the harvest, I pray that you send labor across their path, a minister of Christ Jesus, and the love of God to them. May they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Father, for supplying my every needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Bless every one of us to have the open um, open our eyes of understanding to be in light that we may know what is the hope of your calling to understand your word as I share through this camera in Jesus name I pray God bless you friend uh, let me read today um, I already checked my um, mailbox look at that this is for October the coming golden age October magazine for all of the partners of Turning Point that's your new magazine from Dr. David Jeremiah coming up, moving right along this month, right? So today is the 20th of September, Friday, 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 and we are still in, we are still in the book of Acts. Yesterday I had recorded um, two videos, but only one of them can, were um, able to uh, upload it on YouTube. Don't ask me why. Apparently, that's not the message he wants uh to come across so no weapon form against me and my ministry should prosper everything come against me i condemn it now in jesus name so today is the alls a-l-l-s of prayer friday the 20th of september praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to the this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Ephesians 6, 18, as I'm praying for you, I prayed for you this morning from Ephesians chapter 1 and 3. Praise God, praise God. So here we go. Let's see. Um, Paul concludes his description of the armor of God within mention of prayer the explanation for the addition of prayer lies in greek grammar praying is a part participle not a verbal imperative command like take the helmet and take the sword ephesians six seventeen. in paul's mind praying was a means to accomplishing the previous instructions put on the armor while praying so you can also um, see the recommended reading in Romans 8, 26 through 27. Put on the armor while praying. For Paul, prayer was uh, akin to breathing, a natural activity of communication with God. Just as we don't need to be commanded to breathe, we shouldn't need to be commanded to pray. And yet Paul does, as a reminder in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing, just as breathing is a continual exercise, so should prayer be. Pray all the time, always, with all prayer, with all perseverance, with all the, for all the saints. The four alls, A-L-L-S. The four alls of prayer. Prayer is a critical component in being strong in the Lord, Ephesians 6.10, uh, coating our spiritual armor in prayer provides power and wisdom in spiritual battles. How long can you live without breathing and how long can you live fruitfully without praying? 
turning point. Believing prayer takes its stand upon the faithfulness of God. D. Edmund Hebert or Hybert. So the recommend reading is Romans 8, 26 through 27. Hold on just a moment, friends. Let me put you down for one second here. Okay, hope you have a great day today. I am going to wrap up with this late lunch again. Um, Romans 8. Uh, our baby dog is doing a little better yesterday after our family pray. So I thank to God for answering our prayer as always. Hope you're feeling uh, great today. So Romans 8, 26 to 27. I'm going to read from the King James Version. So Romans 8, 26, 27 is a recommended reading in this day devotional. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself. The Spirit itself, but I'm going to say the Spirit himself, because he's not an it. Holy Spirit is a him. So the Spirit himself make, maketh intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That should comfort us today, friends. Romans 8 26 to 27 this holy spirit is praying and interceding for us praise god so yesterday my second video i was going to share with you on rejoice in the lord because it's kind of go um hand in hand with um with count it all joy from gloria copeland yesterday um when the saint when um defeated when the defeat satan when i was sharing from the defeat satan attack from gloria's book so let me see so part two of that count it all joy is rejoice in the lord with andrew womack here we go rejoice in the lord I got my book here and I got my camera here. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So he had to say it twice. Wouldn't you say that's important? So rejoice in the midst of stressful day like me. Philippians 4, 4. I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not going to be um, anxious or care about anything i don't care i don't care i don't care because i cast all my cares upon you lord my friend pastor bob nichols has been a real in uh, encouragement to me as a matter of fact he's the one who gave me that statement the first report is not the last report he pastor cowrie cathedral in fort worth texas for more than 50 years and still serves on the board of directors of our ministry as I've gotten to be good friends with Pastor Bob and his wife, Joy, I've watched them face some real crisis situation over the years. They have been through things that would have made someone else quit, but I've been really blessed by watching how they responded. Years ago, Pastor Bob's church building was destroyed by a tornado. Not long after that, he was on the internet confidently stating they were going to end up with a facility twice as nice as the one that was destroyed. So I guess the devil was sorry that he um, messed up with that church, right? He chose to believe God, have, pay, uh, have peace and not panic. That following Sunday, they held church elsewhere and some reporters showed up. I'm sure they expected everyone to be in tears, but they were shocked that people were actually positive actually positive and kept a good attitude. They didn't let their hearts be troubled. Praise God. I remember one year a ministers at a minister's conference. I was teaching on glorifying and praising God and Pastor Bob was sitting there on the front row. Suddenly he stood up, threw his Bible on the floor and yelled, I've had just about all of this. 
I can stay in. They kind, that kind of shocked everybody and really got their attention. Then he said, "I've just got to praise God for how good things already are." <laughs> that is awesome. That should shock the devil most. Now at that time, Bob and Joy's daughter had some serious health problems. She had been in a coma. Okay, turn the page. Although she, although she came out of it and they saw progress, the family struggled under those conditions longer than most people would endure. But in the midst of all, in in the midst of it all, Pastor Bob was still praised. Pastor Bob still praised God. He did this in a room full of ministers, and many of them knew what Pastor Bob and Joy had gone through. Wouldn't you know? It just ruined my whole sermon. People got to shout. People got to shouting and praising God, and other people repented for gripping, and complain for griping and complaining. Excuse me. And it all happened because a man who had suffered more than most of us had ever even thought about suffering just decided to praise God for all the good things he'd already done. That's awesome. Praise God. Praise God. So when you're in the middle of any mess or any trial and tribulation, be of good cheer. Rejoice in the Lord. So that's that's my word for today is rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord and casting all your cares upon Him because He cares for you. So, the conclusion is: we live in a fallen world, so you will face problems. You cannot keep problems from coming, but how you respond when a crisis hits is really important. You can keep those problems from getting on the inside of you if your choice, if. It's your choice whether you become bitter or better. If you plan on serving God with your life, you are going to encounter some resistance. When you begin to fulfill, when you begin to fulfill your God-given purpose, Satan is going to fight you. There is a devil going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's First Peter five eight, as I've quoted before. If you never bump into the devil in this life, it might be because you're going in the same direction. Nope. You go, you go that way, devil. I'm going this way, and I'm going up. So, yes, I'm going the opposite of you, devil. But when you turn around and begin following God's plan for your life, you're going to get resistance, and you will need to know how to keep your heart from being troubled. There are, uh, there are going to be crisis situa situations in your life, but they don't have to overwhelm you. You can keep the right perspective on life, rely on the Holy Spirit, be at peace, and keep praising God no matter the circumstances. Jesus told his dis Jesus told his disciples all these things so they would walk in victory and not be offended and he is no respecter of person i believe that if you put the word of god to work in your life you will experience god's very best and you will overcome any crisis you will overcome any crisis this is christian's first aid kit how to respond in a crisis so i want to praise god right now since I had a stressful day, praise you, Father. I praise you. I bless you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I forgot not, forget not all your benefits. Praise you, Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the the gift of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus, your Son. Thank you, Lord, for your love and grace. Thank you, Lord, for your living word. Thank you for your living word that I can go to it anytime, anywhere. 
Thank you, Lord, for you hide, you hide in me. I hide your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Thank you, Lord, for the power.